We are currently witnessing one of the biggest political realignments in American history. What is up, people of the internet? It is me, Real American, back in with a new video. And today, it is time to talk about the 2024 presidential election because everyone, the upcoming presidential election is going to be a close one, obviously. Now, that doesn't mean I don't think Trump's going to win, but I do think no matter what happens, this election is going to come down the wire. But I do know one thing for certain. We are currently witnessing one of the biggest political realignments in American history. And I know that's a huge statement. We're not talking about just in the last 10 years. No, I firmly believe that we are witnessing the biggest political realignment in American history. And guess what? The New York Times just released a new article detailing, yeah, we are in fact witnessing a political realignment that no one, and I mean no one, could have predicted even two years ago. Now, before we continue with today's video, I hope you enjoy these type of videos. If you do, smash the like button down below, subscribe, share with your friends, hit that little bell, follow the social media accounts in the description down below, and of course, join the channel today. Again, folks, still support is greatly appreciated, and uh, yeah. Now, let us get into it. In a reversal of one of the most familiar patterns in American politics, it appears that Trump, not President Biden, would stand a gain if everyone in the country turned out and voted. Yeah. For the first time potentially ever, the Republican presidential candidate does better with higher turnout. I don't think that's ever happened, for sure the past 50 years. Because for the last 50 years, Republicans prayed for low turnout most of the time. Again, there, there are some exemptions to that rule but either way most of the time if the turnout was above five percent the republican candidate lost and that's kind of an exaggeration but that's the reality of it look back at 2010 there was a red tsunami same thing in 2014 well guess what no one voted that's why republicans for years did good in low turnout elections but when more than five people voted they did awful and that's the simple reality of the Republican coalition before Trump. The only people that voted Republican were old people and those with a college degree. That's a reality. In other words, people that vote in every single election. That's why they prayed for low turnout, because if it's higher turnout, well, you're going to see a lot more low propensity voters voting. And they vote, or they did vote, overwhelmingly Democrat, not just by one point we're talking like a 30 point shift that's why this is stunning of any republican presidential candidate i don't think any of us would have expected it would have been trump that single-handedly remade the political landscape to this magnitude we're not talking about just a small shift we're talking about a complete reversal of decades worth of data just thrown out the window in a New York Times slash Siena College polls over the last year, Mr. Biden holds a wide lead over Mr. Trump among regular primary and midterm voters, yet he trails among the rest of the electorate, giving Mr. Trump a lead among registered voters overall. Doesn't this sound familiar? It's as if a certain somebody was saying this for two years. Yeah, I called this two years ago. Look it up. I've been saying for a long time that, hey, wait a minute. Higher turnout might benefit Republicans. That could explain what happened in 2022. Just look at the specials versus the actual midterm. The special elections, Republicans did awful in. But in the midterm, which had higher turnout, Republicans did better in the same races. Not, you know, completely separate offices. We're talking about the exact same race. Just one was a special and one was the actual general. And for whatever reason, every single time, the Republican did worse in the special. Well, there's a clear correlation there. Lower turnout helps Democrats now. Because guess what? That's their coalition. Their coalition now are people that vote in every single election. We saw this in Ohio 6 just a week ago. The areas with higher turnout were the best parts of the district for the Republican. This isn't just a conspiracy. This is a fact. Higher turnout now benefits Trump and Republicans. And for whatever reason, 
People cannot accept this. Like, okay, it, it used to be a big question mark about how legitimate this claim is. But at some point, if every single special, especially the ones with even lower turnout, swing Democrat, and the, even the same specials that have higher turnout swing Republican, well, do the math. And we've been seeing this for not just two elections. We've been seeing this for every single special for three years now. This is proof that, hey, there is legitimacy to the claim that higher turnout helps Republicans. The pattern is the latest example of how the Trump brand of conservative populism has transformed American politics. His candidacy galvanized liberals to defend democracy and abortion rights, giving Democrats the edge in low turnout special and midterm elections. Yet at the same time, early polls suggest many less engaged and infrequent voters have grown deeply dissatisfied with Biden. And that's, that's just common sense. The reality is the people that vote Democrat, no matter who now, you know, the people that think, oh, Biden's the greatest president ever. Guess what? They're not the ones suffering financially. They're the ones that don't have to worry about the southern border because half of them live in gated communities. In other words, they are completely out of touch with what's happening in America. They have no clue why the southern border being wide open is actually a bad thing because they don't have to worry about the consequences of it. That's the reality. That's why these people are now voting Democrat no matter what. And they're the same ones that vote in every single election. It doesn't matter if it's a school board race. It doesn't matter if it's a referendum for God knows what. It doesn't matter. These people vote in every single race. The disengaged voters do not necessarily like Mr. Trump, the point shows, but they're motivated by pocketbook issues, more desiring of fundamental changes to the political system, and far less concerned with democracy as an issue in this election. And that's the reality of it. These people live in the real world. The people that don't vote in every single election, they're the ones that actually work for a living. They're not the ones that, you know, oh, think democracy's the number one issue. They're not the ones that think abortion's the number one concern. They care about the economy and immigration. And you can also add in crime. But either way, these people, they are sick of what's happening. And that's why, despite not liking Trump, most of them are going to vote for him. Because it's like, okay, who cares if he's the orange man? Who freaking cares? I care more about being able to afford food next week. That's the reality of it. That's why these people are going to vote for him. Many low turnout voters, notably including many who consider themselves Democrats, now say they'll back Mr. Trump. This unusual turnout dynamic is one of the central forces shaping up the 2024 campaign. It helps explain why recent polls and election results seem so divergent, and why Mr. Trump is gained among young and non-white voters who are less likely to vote than older white voters. It creates a challenge for the campaigns, where finding the time-tested strategies for mobilizing irregular voters may not work quite the same as they did in the past. When even the campaigns are realizing, oh wait, there's something happening here. These strategies that used to work in the past, they're not working now. The fact that they realize that should tell you everything, that this is not just a grand conspiracy or some, you know, theory. Just, just a regular theory that may be true, but it's not actually what the campaigns believe. No, it seems like the campaigns actually believe there's something happening here. The usual strategies are not working. With five months to go until the election, there's still time for less engaged voters to tune in and swing back towards Mr. Biden. Many frequent voters aren't yet tuned into the race, and their preferences appear highly volatile. If the polls are right, they've swan 20 percentage points since 2020, but some changed their answers when re-interviewed in the wake of Mr. Trump's felony conviction in New York. The problem with that theory, however, is we're seeing the polling flip back to Trump. Yes, of course, right after the conviction, that's when the polling should have just collapsed for him. And yes, some people did flip towards Biden. But we're now seeing in other polls, wait a minute, that two-point shift or whatever? It's starting to revert. Hell, Trump's actually gaining in some areas. So this theory, yes, if we're seeing it now, fine. That maybe the low turnout people are just not tuned in and they're going to flip the Biden. The problem is, Right now, that's not what's happening. Quite the opposite in some polling. So, we're in June. We are five months away from the election. 
the first debate's what, in two weeks? If these people are supposedly not tuned in now, I highly doubt, at least some of them, but I, I guarantee you the vast majority of people that are supposedly not tuned in the race by now, they're not going to tune in all. They're not going to care at that point because we're in June, the first debate's in two weeks. So this theory that, well, people are not yet caring about the race, Five months ago, fine. You can argue that. But it's June. And this isn't just a boring race like 2012. This is a race that everyone's talking about. Everyone knows that this is going to be a very chaotic election. And the fact that some people are supposedly just not tuned in yet, I think that's a cope. I really believe that's a complete cope to say that, well, actually, the people are not tuned in yet. That's why Biden is doing awful. If they haven't tuned in yet, again, some of them will, fine. But if you explain the lead Trump has because of, well, a bunch of people are just not paying attention yet. You know who else said the same thing? The DeSimps eight months ago before Iowa. Yeah, so we are in December and we are still losing to Iowa by like 30 points. But it's because no one's paying attention yet. It's the same thing. Just this time, replace DeSantis with Biden and replace the Sims with Democrats. That's what's happening. It's the same talking points from the DeSantis campaign. And now it's just the Biden campaign doing the same thing. Oh, well, no one's paying attention yet. Bullshit. If they aren't paying attention by now, they're not going to vote. Or they just don't care. If you really think Trump's lead is because not enough people are paying attention yet, you're delusional. You don't actually know what the hell you're talking about. Is it possible? I guess. But it's June. We're not, we're not, you know, three years before the election. We are five months out. And the debate's about to start. And early voting's what? Two months away? In some states? So these people better tune in ASAP because the election's right around the corner. Either way. The fact that we're even talking about this as a legitimate possibility, not just, you know, oh, this is actually a Republican conspiracy to cope about the 2024 election. No, they, they're not saying that. They're actually admitting, yeah, you know what? They might be right. Remember when I was called crazy and all that a year ago for saying, yeah, um, I think higher turnout benefits Trump. I was called a bunch of crap then, but now the same people are either quiet about this subject or now they're saying, actually, um, yeah, I knew all along that higher turnout means, you know, Trump's going to win. These same people have completely reversed course on this issue. Now, am I saying that Trump's going to win by 30 points because of this? No. But I do think even if Biden somehow wins this voter block, which I don't think he will, it's still a massive shift from 2020. The new voters, or I should say the low propensity voters, for years have benefited Democrats, not just by one point, by like 20 to 30 points. But now, at best case scenario for Biden, they're tied. That's a 20 to 30 point shift in four years. And we're getting more data points by the day. Yeah, these low propensity voters, the new ones, are much more Republican than they were in years past. Hell, look at what happened in Pennsylvania. They passed automatic voter registration. And for those that don't know, that means if you turn 18, right, you automatically register to vote. You don't have to do it yourself. Well, when that happened, Republicans gained tens of thousands of new voters. And not just Democrats flipping. These are brand new voters that never registered. In other words, these people have no reason to be Democrats. They never were registered, and suddenly, the second that they passed the law, Republicans surged. So, the more you look at this, the more you realize, yeah, this isn't just a grand conspiracy, this isn't a cope, it's a fact. Republicans now benefit from higher turnout. Anyways, folks, thank you so much for watching. If you guys did enjoy this video, smash the like button down below, subscribe, share with your friends, hit that little bell, follow the social media accounts in the description down below, and of course, join the channel today. Godspeed to all of you.